For this talk, I'd like to talk about Samatha and Vipassana. These are two terms that you commonly hear in this world. Um, in Chinese, it is uh, guan. Uh, is zi xi. guan is guan cha. Guan. So in English, I translate it as settling and direct. Uh, or settling and distinct seeing. Samatha is settling and asana is distinct seeing. Uh, those who want to take notes, uh, it's okay to take note on this one. <laughs> there might be a few things here for you to take notes. So if you like to, go ahead. But um, try to remember to practice. For settling, samatha, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, someone requested for the transcription. Thomas Gaw, I think uh, for, uh, I'm not sure why you want it, but, um, but a lot of people find it quite disturbing. Uh, well, I find it, one day I find it useful um, to post the meeting so I can review it so on some key points so that I can capture the notes later on instead of during the session itself. If the public, I mean, the general is actually finding disturbing, then I'm okay uh, not to on the transcripts. Thank you. Okay. Um, actually for this, if you uh, don't mind, sending you all my, my notes. <laughs> so uh, so maybe after this, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, after, after the, this retreat, I'll, I'll email you my notes so you don't have to, uh, so you don't need it, yeah. I'll, I'll email you my notes. Lecture notes, e email to you, no need to write. <laughs> Okay, so first one is, um, I'd like to say about Samatha is the definition of Samatha in the suttas. I, I, I want to say this, uh, I find this very important because people's idea of Samatha these days is very much influenced by the later texts, which often take Samatha to mean concentration meditation. But if you refer to the early text, samatha does not mean that. In the, in the common understanding these days, you find that people talk of samatha and vipassana as two kinds of meditation that are different and, in fact, mutually exclusive. In other words, they cannot be practiced at the same time. Whereas uh, in the early text, these two qualities, these, these two are said to be uh, qualities that are both necessary, they are both needed for uh, awakening. It, and, and they are both, not only that, they are, it is possible to practice these two at the same time. So in fact, we need both. And if we practice one uh, the, to, to begin with, you actually have to follow with and the other. So when you do it, that's what you call samatha preceded by vipassana and that's vipassana preceded by samatha. It doesn't mean you do this and then you do that. But it is you do this and the other one follows. Just as uh, two, uh, as, as just there are two animals, one following the other. And then it is, there is also uh, the kind of practice where it is called uh, samatha and vipassana yoktite, meaning to say, if you perhaps you have seen two buffaloes or, uh, tied together at the neck and then they are dragging a cart. 
So, um, so if you think one buffalo's name is Samatai, the other buffalo name is Vipassana, these two are working together, dragging this card. So obviously you cannot drag, you cannot, that when the two are tied together, they cannot be one more first and then the other move and then one, they have to be moving at the same time. So, um, and this is how uh, it is described in the text, Samatai Vipassana Yogtai Yuganatta. Uh, so, um, so obviously the early text idea of Samatai Vipassana and the common idea within Orthodox Theravada now is not the same. So the current present idea, it comes from the later text, later or what you call the commentaries of the Theravada or the post canonical text. So when I use Samatha Vipassana, I use according to the early text, the early teachings, uh, the suttas. So, and once you get this idea right, you, you, for those of you who study a lot and you wonder why some people say samatha don't not necessary and blah, 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 and then some say it's necessary. So then you get to see how these two actually contradict each other because they are simply using words differently. So now, or samatha according to the early text, the description in one, uh, the best, the best description that you can find in the text is, uh, is in the form of four questions. What happens is that the uh, in the sutta, uh, a person who is accomplished in samatha but not accomplished in vipassana is to. Uh, go to someone who is accomplished in Vipassana and ask him a few questions. And the same goes the other way around. So if a person is, uh, is good at Vipassana, but is Samatha is not too good. So he will go to someone who's good at Samatha and ask him these four questions. And what are the four questions to, to be asked? How is the mind to be stated? This is the first question. And the mind, the word mind here is the translation of citta. Um, citta, uh, sometimes people translate, it's very difficult to translate it to English. Um, Chinese, no problem, always translated as sin, uh, no issue at all. Uh, English, uh, the culture is a bit different, so we have a problem here. But uh, so people sometimes will translate as heart mind <laughs> to try to get it closer. So anyway, this is the citta. The mind here refers to the citta. How is the mind to be stated? This, this citta is the one that can be uh, composed or not composed, that can be um, ad adulterated by defilements such as greed, anger, delusion. It can be... Uh, big, it can be small, you know, sometimes you, know, you feel that the mind is expansious or you feel the mind is contracted or the mind that is distracted or the mind that is, um, yeah, contracted, things like that. So how is the mind to be stated? This is the first one. Second one, how is the mind to be settled down? Then how is the mind to be poised? It used to be uh, that I accepted the common translation of how the mind is to be unified. I, eventually, I came to see there's something wrong with the translation and I made quite a bit of effort to research into this and came to see that poised is a good translation. Poised, as in you may know the word equipoise. Uh, so poised... Originally, poise means to hold, but the meaning of poise now has come to also, has come to also, also be used as uh, to balance. So how is the mind to be balanced in that sense? Held in a balanced way. Then how is the mind to be composed? Yeah, or they'll be collected. This is also a possible translation. 
So as you can see the, in the four questions uh, describing Samatha, the, there is no sense of needing to concentrate the mind. Now the last one, often it is translated, how is the mind to be concentrated, but the word uh, for this one is, uh, how is the mind samadaha uh, tabbang? Um, and actually it is, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't go too technical with the Pali. Um, Give you the bottom line. Bottom line is, I translate it as uh, to be composed or to be collected. I find this uh, both literally and etymologically uh, fitting. Liter literally, etymologically, and also functionally fitting uh, as it is found in the early text. The idea of samatha is not to Arrow the mind's attention. As you can see, even if you leave out the last one, yeah, uh, if you if you if you refer to the, the others, uh, steady, settle down. This is not about narrowing down the mind. It's about mm, so even the word samatha is it means settling. The word samatha is also found in the Vinaya text. There's a term called atikarana samatha. Literally, quite literally, can be translated as settling a case settlement. Uh, it refers to seven ways how, when monks have disputes, seven ways how uh, these disputes are to be settled. You know, how to settle the case. So it is the same idea. It's not how are uh, the uh, how are these cases to be concentrated. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So how can we bring about samatha? What allows us to have the mind become steadied, settled down, poised, composed? How can that happen? Right. Again, it's, we, are not, we cannot do this directly. So the question here is interesting, is, is the how that is important. We want the mind to be calm, to be calm, to be subtle. Yes, that's uh, who doesn't want that, yeah. <laughs> but we cannot force the mind to do that. However, when we think in terms of how we, we we are looking into the causes, how can that happen? How? When we think in terms of how we are using our intelligence, we are using wisdom. We are not just bull forcing, we are like losing, you know, this bull, bulldozing way of, or, or forcing way of trying to make things happen. We are thinking, how? Yeah, it's like, how can you balance on a bicycle? You can't force yourself to balance. If you know how to balance on a the bicycle, then that happens. If you don't know, then, then you can't, you can't. It's about knowing how. Yes. Or if you want to balance anything, you know, it's about knowing how you can force it to happen. So in meditation, we also want to learn how we're using our intelligence to see how things can be in a particular way. And once you know, it becomes easy to you. It's no longer difficult. And one thing is important is that we, the body needs to be relaxed. Yeah, as I mentioned before, Anapanasati actually is meant to calm down the fabrications. In other words, you are not tightening up, you're relaxed. And once the body is relaxed, you find that the mind doesn't think so much, it becomes quiet. Relaxation is important. Mm -hmm. And for most people, we do have a tendency to tense up. Yeah. Um, so, and, and some people have far more than others. So if you find that you have this issue, it is very important to check again and again if the body is tensed.
Another thing that would be very helpful for you to, uh, for the mind to settle is don't hurry, don't rush. Don't... You probably notice this yourself yeah, in your daily life. You rush, the mind is like this. So although we have this idea, then maybe something happens and then we start rushing again. Uh, so you have to remind yourself not to rush. And then, of course, in, in daily life, it, we, we, to, to make this possible, we need to design our lives in such a way that we don't rush. Yeah. I, I used to love, well, I don't know whether I can say love. I used to do things last minute. My mother kept saying that. <laughs> it reminded me, why do you wait till last minute to do things? Somehow, there's this kind of Maybe like excitement to you know to do things last minute, the last minute rush. <laughs> it's like there's this kind of uh, energy flow and that that somehow that's exciting. And so I, I tend to do that. You know, if 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 just once I manage to finish something in five minutes, I always think that I can do that. But that's not true. Mostly I cannot do that. Mostly that never happens. Yeah. But then it ends up making me very uh, stressed up just because I believe that I could do that. And every time I can do that, and then uh, eventually that caused me to be uh, late in, be able to do certain things. Uh, and besides getting stressed up. Um, so what would be helpful is to Start early, don't postpone. I, I, that's my issue. So just postpone, postpone. Oh, what's that word? Uh, there's another one called procrastinate. Yeah, procrastinate your work. I remember in, when I was in university, I always do that. It's, oh, assignment. Okay, when? What's up? Or oh, three months from now, oh, plenty of time, lah, plenty of time. <laughs> so then another assignment, how, how long? Oh, two, 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 two weeks, okay, plenty of time. Well, oh, 10 weeks, plenty of time. Eventually everything comes together. <laughs> no plenty of time left. Yeah, you rush like crazy, like mad. Yeah, I remember once I uh, waited until the last few days, Oh, see the <laughs> die, die. Almost time to, to need to pass up this thing already. And uh, but still, like it's very strange when the mind is uh, stressed out over something because it's so stressful to think about it. it doesn't want to think about it. Anyway, it doesn't want to think about it. Then you postpone it <laughs> again. You you procrastinate even further. Uh, then eventually. Only the day before <laughs> the passing on assignment I started doing, then uh, of course that uh, brought a lot of stress and uh, I had to spend the whole night doing. And then early in the morning, I pass my homework to my friend and say, I can't go to lecture today. <laughs> so we have to sleep. <laughs> So um, if, you are, if you have this issue, you need to try to avoid it. Um, one thing that I found helpful is not to think in terms of how much time left uh, you have or when you need to complete something. You need to think in terms of when you need to start. You think about it. Okay, when do I need to start? If you think about when you need to start, you, you, because you would have thought about it, yeah? When I need to start, then you have to consider other factors and all that. So if you think about when you need to start, then that is the thing, that's the time to start. You don't care, you just, just go ahead and start. Then it saves you from a lot of uh, unnecessary stress. This is what I've learned. <laughs> When we rush, we that definitely will reduce samadhi. We'll definitely make the mind less composed. You probably notice, yeah. It's like going to the airport. Uh, some people would see you see like 
if you see in the airport, you see people rushing, running, whoosh, okay, you know who these people are. <laughs> these are the ones who started late. <laughs> you know, for whatever reason, they got late. Yeah, and then you see a lot of people taking like very relaxed. So these are the ones who don't have to stress themselves up. Another thing is about sitting. Um, if you want the mind to be more composed, it's useful to sit comfortably, not sit in a very strange, strange way. Some people think that oh, sitting meditation should be done with a, a full lotus posture. So full lotus. I, I can do full lotus, but um, I, I don't normally do it. It's not necessary. Uh, it's if you can go ahead. It's not not a problem in itself. In fact, it's a pretty good posture to sit in a, a very upright way. But you don't have to do it. Don't try to sit in a position or way that is uh, stressful to you because that's definitely not good for samatha. The mind doesn't settle well that way, and. If you do need to adjust your posture, go ahead. Don't think that you need to sit from the beginning to the end without moving your, without changing your posture. This idea is actually stressful. Sit down like that. Okay, even decide for yourself. Okay, the last time I said managed to set, sit for 25 minutes. This time, 30 minutes. I don't care, 30 minutes. I'm not moving until I reach 30 minutes. The moment you think like that, stress level goes up. Mm. Because you, you are, you're forcing things. You, you're creating a target. How do you know what's going to happen? Maybe 10, 10, five minutes, 10 minutes later, you start to feel pain. And then you're thinking, oh, how many more minutes to go? I start to sweat. What's the point? There's no point doing that. Yeah. In fact, don't think in terms of how long you should sit. That just gives you time stress. You never find anywhere in the sutta that where the Buddha say, okay, sit for half an hour and they walk half an hour. There's no such thing. <laughs> the Buddha is not a, the Buddha is not a what they call torturer. <laughs> it's not a sadist. So you don't have to be a sadist towards yourself. For goodness, be kind. <laughs> For goodness sake, be kind to yourself. There's no need to stress yourself up that, uh, that way. And this idea that you cannot move your posture, this forcing, well, uh, if there's no need to move, then don't. But the idea that you should not move, you must not move, this is a stressful idea, isn't it? Yeah. And some people will say, one thing, you know, uh, when they talk me, tell me about a sit like that, it's very painful. And then why, not, why, not, why not you change your posture? I, I told them. Well, if I change my posture, then my samadhi will be gone, right? Uh, my, then my thing uh, my, my mind cannot settle. Uh. Then I'll ask them, you force yourself to sit like, like that, your mind very settled, man. <laughs> Is your mind very settled sitting like that? I mean, <laughs> people stop thinking for themselves what actually happens. It is just an idea. Don't move means the mind can settle. Move the mind cannot settle. Even if actually not moving is making the mind very unsettled. <laughs> Look for yourself, see for yourself what, what's true. But it's like that when we attach to certain ideas, we stop thinking. <laughs> Stop watching and see whether or not the, uh, what we believe to be true is actually true. So no need to force yourself to sit for a, a, a long, long time. Uh, for me, I, I never have this concept of having to sit for a long time. Not to say never. I, I, for a long time, I, I've not had this. I've dropped, thrown away this idea a long, long time ago. I just sit as long as I like to sit. Sometimes it end up, ends up longer than I could imagine early on. Sometimes after a while, I felt that mm, this is not the right posture for me to practice at this for now. Walking is a better idea than I get up and walk. And whether I sit or walk, I'm still practicing because 
the practice is not about sitting, it's not about walking, it's about being aware. Remember that? Okay. Hmm. Another thing that is useful is um, if you're on your walk, you also walk comfortably. Um, shall remind myself not to say normally, <laughs> uh, comfortably, naturally, just walk. Yeah, don't try to walk in a special way. If you walk in a special way, of course, you stress yourself out as well. And the mind is less settled. Ali, there is a term chankama, which, which is found in the early text. You can translate it it's a, as a walking meditation, but it's not. It's just walking up and down. It's like pacing, just walking up and down. After meal, it's a good thing to do, walking up and down to, uh, to aid digestion. Just walk up and down. Samatha, we need to allow the mind to settle naturally. It's not about forcing things to happen. It's not about shutting it off, not to concentrate the attention, not to control it, not to dial our senses. Instead, we want to open up. To open up. Don't try to know everything at the same time. That's not possible when the mind is not, uh, it does not have the capacity. Awareness is not a matter of you having it or not having it. It's not, not black and white like this. It's, it's, it's a big, big uh, spectrum of, of um, between black and white. Yeah. Many, many shades of gray. To grow in awareness is like a light bulb getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And you can actually feel your mind being bright. There's a sense of brightness as you practice, as you cultivate the mind. There's a sense of brightness that happens. Um, you can actually, when your mind is well cultivated, come to a point where you can feel like there is almost as if there's a kind of light. It's not a light that you can see with your eyes, but you feel that there's a brightness that comes from within. Yeah, maybe those with special eyes, they can see that, you know, and see, wow, your aura is very strong. Yeah. But you, you can actually feel it. That is a, that's a brightness. As opposed to, you know, okay, maybe you know this one better. When you are very sleepy, very dull, you know, you feel like very dark, right? Uh, that's the, it's the opposite of that. You feel like, you know, there's this kind of brightness and it stays there whether you're sitting or walking or sweeping the floor. It's just this brightness. It's very, very comfortable. Yeah. It's very likable. Uh, but when that happens, usually people, if you experience it for the first time, you like it very much. Uh, and that's defilements coming in. <laughs> uh, no need to like it. Just recognize it. Mm, okay. So it's like that. And it's always good when you are practicing well to understand why that happened rather than just enjoying it. How did that happen? How did the mind become like this? And then you, you learn, you learn from your experience. Um, you're not just happened to get there. Uh, well, perhaps in first time you wouldn't understand why, why it was like that, but be interested to know how. If you practice, if, you, if your mind goes into a, uh, very negative state, it's also good to understand how, how that happened. When it goes to in a very positive state, it's also good to understand how that happened. And when you understand how, how that happens, then you're learning. It's like if you want to, uh, if, you, if you want to learn how to swim, you want to know, okay, how to do it well. Or you want to learn how to drive a car. You also want to learn how to do it well. Yeah, it's about how. Even you know how, it's not a problem. You ching, 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 you know. When you don't know, you okay, all right. Press the uh, what? Press this and shift the gear and can okay. Then press the accelerator. Oh, 
the car stalled. Okay, start again. <laughs> then, okay, so, but just, 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 you can't just keep doing the same thing over and over. You have to know why the car stalled. Yeah, so same goes with meditation. Why, why, did, why does it sometimes go well, sometimes it doesn't go well? We want to know that. So when we practice, um, although the OS awareness grows, we should become more and more aware, we know more and more things. Don't try to do that. Start from as much as you know. Yeah. Like for example, say, if you know the breathing, in the beginning, you only know a little bit part of the body, part of the body uh, where, where the breathing is happening. But as you do more and more, then you can pretty much feel the whole body. Then maybe later on, you can know the breathing and know the seeing at the same time or feelings, the emotional feelings at the same time. So it, it should grow this way. The OS is like the light. When the light is brighter, then it can cover a wider area. When the light is not bright, it cannot cover a wide area, just like that. So you start from as much as you can know and allow that to expand. But if you have the idea of concentration, then you don't allow that to expand. You still remain, it, it remains a very small area, but it becomes very intense. It's like laser lights. Uh, that's not what we want to practice. Yeah. I mentioned this before. Um, talking, you can check for yourself whether or not it's necessary. And you do, if you are willing to really check and you find that it's not necessary, you'll find that you don't talk so much. And you, if that happens, when that happens, you'll also notice that the mind is less chatty. You probably have seen, you probably have experienced uh, situations where you talk, 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 talk a lot with somebody and after you finish the conversation, you move away uh, from the crowd, you find that the mind is still talking, still repeating certain things that you say and maybe sometimes, ah, I shouldn't have said it that way and I should have, should have said it this way and, and blah, blah, you, go, uh, and you repeat certain things that you have said or repeat certain things that you heard. It takes us quite some time before it settles. Yeah. So if you don't indulge in this, then you don't have to go through this thing. So do consider where it's necessary. Another thing, very important thing is behavior, sila. The most basic meaning of the word sila is just behavior or conduct. If you don't do, if you do something wrong, then you feel bad about it. You feel remorse. Of course, that disturbs the mind. Agree? Yeah. So try to avoid doing such things. Yeah. Some people, um, they can certain things that they do. It can be pretty disturbing for them. It disturbs them even after many many years. Yeah. So, uh, so that's why sila is important. And sometimes people feel like they've forgotten it and then during meditation, it pops up because when the mind settles, whatever things that it is, uh, the mind hasn't really let go of will appear to you. Not a bad thing in itself. Um, th this is a time for you to clear it up. Uh, but of course, if you haven't done that thing in the first place, then you don't have this issue. So sila is important. Okay, let me go to distinct seeing with pasana. Pasana means seeing. V here uh, for for this at least, uh, Bhante translates as uh, the V part. Trans he translates as distinct, 
which I, when I look into a dictionary and I uh, check on the various meanings of V, I found that the, this is probably the best uh, translation that's possible for in, in English. Distinct seeing because the word V here can mean clear. Uh, it can mean distinct as in different. It can mean clear. It can also have the meaning of different, which is also uh, in the word distinct in English. Um, so it, it's, it's quite, uh, I would say, the best possible translation. Distinct seeing. So now, just as in the case of samatha, it is, uh, is described in, four, in, four, in terms of questions. Uh, so is this, but only three questions. How are fabrications, and fabrication is a translation for, of sankara, how are fabrications to be viewed? And second one, how are fabrications to be probed? Probed as in to be investigated. Check, check, check. And then the last one, how are fabrications to be distinctly seen? This is uh, vipassita by, it's just a verb form of the noun. So how fabrication, what, what are fabrication? Fabrications are everything, anything that is fabricated or constructed or formed. These are fabrications. Sankara is the Bali word. Now, how are the fabrications to be viewed? Here, this, this relates to how, uh, what I've been saying, to see things uh, with right view. To have right view, how do, do you, when like you see, when there's feelings, do you regard feelings as just feelings? It's just a construction, a, a fabrication, not instead of taking it personally. Or like say, thoughts. It's just another fabrication, something that is happening, it is created by conditions. So everything, uh, physical sensations, seeing, seeing. So seeing happens because of there are conditions for seeing to happen. Yeah, there is the eye, there is the object, there is the consciousness, and therefore seeing can happen. So it's uh, so long as the conditions are there, it happens. So these are all fabrications. And so how to view these fabrications? To view them as they are, just as they are. And how are fabrications to be probed? Some, uh, some uh, sit up, uh, uh, probe as in to investigate, to look into, to be... Uh, Scrutinize, analyze. Well, analyze may be too much. Yeah, scrutinize or so probe. Like, like you, hmm, what's this thing? Like, what? Okay, feelings. What is feeling? You know, uh, why, why is there this feeling? Why did this feeling arise? So this probing. And when, when we meditate, we are not just, just uh, watching something or it's like, like a stupid fellow just was. Well, we, we, that's not that's not meditation. We want to be interested. We want to hmm. Maybe not all the time. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes it's not suitable to investigate. When the mind is very disturbed, uh, don't don't investigate because if you investigate at that time, you uh, become even more disturbed. The mind becomes because investigation is agitating. When the mind is very agitated, don't investigate. Or if you do, don't do too much of it. Yeah, it is not. Uh, it is not the right time to do it. Wait for the mind to be more a bit more settled. Okay, then you investigate. You can't wait until nothing happens because something always happens. Uh, if nothing happens, then there's nothing to investigate. Yeah. So, but do not investigate when the mind is very agitated. Often when uh, the mind is calm, people don't like to investigate either because why investigate now? Very nice, man. I'm going to enjoy <laughs> don't investigate. So actually when the mind is calm, that is the time, that's the best time to investigate. Once the mind is ready for it.
So when the mind is calm, you can investigate the you know, how come the mind is calm? How come how come it's peaceful? What brought it brought it about? And you can also check and see is does this belong to you? Do you own it? Things like that. The last one, now last one is not something that you can do directly. The last one is something that uh, has to happen so long when conditions are right for it to happen. The last one is um, you can translate in a in different way how a fabrication to be incited. You know, that's not an English word. Yeah. How can you have insight into fabrications that we more English way of uh, putting it? Um, or just simply, how can you gain insights? Insights, um, this glimpses of truth, which does not last, it's just for a short while. And you do not, you cannot force it to stay for a long time. After that, it's gone. Uh, and also, you cannot make it happen. Uh, you will certainly understand this when you have an insight. You, you will know for yourself, it's impossible to create it. And it always happens when you don't expect it. It could be walking to your toilet and you have an insight. My experience, uh, people think maybe you, when you sit very quietly, very and all that, uh, then ding, you know, the light bulb comes up, you know. Uh, my light bulb comes up mostly when I'm not sitting. Mostly when I am uh, not doing this formal sitting. Formal sitting is good for settling out the mind. But somehow, uh, insights don't happen so much during that. Uh, at other times, insights are more likely to happen when you least expect it. Probably because uh, when you sit, you are a bit too serious. You, there's a bit more of expectation in things. And insights cannot happen when expectation is there. Expectation is greed. And so whenever there's a kind of greed in the mind, uh, you'll never get insights. You still need to practice somehow, yeah, but then insights happen when you are not expecting it. So yes. forget about trying to have insights. Just focus on the practice. And if you practice right, you do it right, conditions are there, insight happens. So these are the three questions, how fabrications to be viewed, to be probed, and to be distinctly seen. Next, cultivate wise awareness. This is what my teacher often uh, emphasize. We don't want to just be aware. We want to be aware in a wise way. There needs to be wisdom in the awareness. In the past, he doesn't teach like that because he thought people knew, people he thought people understood. For him, when he has awareness, uh, there's always a little bit, at least a little bit of wisdom in it. But then he realized that a lot of people, when they say awareness, uh, there may not be any wisdom or hardly any wisdom in it. So he needs to emphasize this quality of wisdom in, uh, in the awareness now. So what do we mean by the quality of wisdom? I mentioned before that interest is a quality of wisdom. When you're interested to, un to, to understand, when you're interested to observe, the mind is of a different quality. Mm. But when we don't have this interest, it's just it's like, like staring blankly. Right? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just very shallow kind of awareness. So the in order to have this wise quality in it, um, interest is one. Now, another one would be having right view to see things as they are. That is also a quality of wisdom. When you investigate, 
There's also a quality of wisdom in it. So eventually you come and you practice a lot. Eventually you get to know this quality in itself. You can watch wisdom as an object. Actually, you do have wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom, if you don't have wisdom, you won't be here. But you may not have enough wisdom to know that you have wisdom. <laughs> because in order to observe wisdom, you, the mind needs to be even wiser to recognize that wisdom is present. You can have the wisdom to practice properly and all that, but and you may have the wisdom to um, cultivate the mind so that it becomes calm, becomes peaceful, that all that takes wisdom. But you may not know, where's the, what, where's the wisdom? I can't find it. Where's the wisdom? You don't know it. Until you come to a point, then you start to notice something that you've never seen before or you don't recognize before. You know, this, what's this thing? Like there is a kind of intelligence that's happening right now. Eventually you realize, ah, oh, this is wisdom. <laughs> and then you start to know. And again, this is not something that you can uh, force to happen. It will arise, it will, you will notice in itself when the wisdom has gained uh, enough strength. So that's why in the text, in the text, it, it talks about the five faculties also in terms of strength. Wisdom is also strength and bala. Mindfulness also can have its strength. Samadhi can have its strength. Wisdom also has its strength. Yeah. So, um, so just to give you this idea for now. Oh, another thing is a right attitude. That's also wisdom. Yeah, to have right attitude over things, to not take, uh, to not try to push them, or try to grab at objects, try to chase over, chase, uh, not chasing something, nor trying to change things. This right attitude is also wisdom. So this is uh, all I have to say about summertime vipassana. Okay, so question time. How to practice uh, not to follow the content of the thoughts? Okay, good question. Um, you can only do that when you see thoughts as thoughts. That is not possible when the mind is not yet ready to do that. Now, compared to physical sensation, physical sensations are gross. It's easy to uh, observe it and it's easier to see it as separate from your observing mind. Whereas uh, thoughts are kind of like closer and it's more subtle. It's more difficult to see as, as they are. So um, when you can't, you just can't. When, not, when you can't, you simply just can't. So don't try it when you can't. You can do it for a while. You just know, okay, there is thinking. Don't, not, to, not to see the thoughts yet. Just know that thinking is happening. Just know it for a while. Then go back, go to something gross. It's, it's good to practice, to try it a bit, and then, but don't stay there. Uh, when the mind is not ready, if you stay there, you tend to get dragged by the thoughts. Yeah, you get lost, you get caught up with it. So just know a bit and move away. Start, start like that. Uh, so eventually, 
you get to see that as an object rather than something that you are doing. Yeah, but you think that that is what you are doing. There's no separation already. You just get dragged along. So don't try to do when you can't. If you want to, then just know it. Okay, that's thinking. Just know a little bit of it for a few seconds and move away. Then go back again, just a little bit and move away. Now don't, don't stay there. So because you have this idea of not staying, you have the, when you watch it, you already have the intention to move away, then chances of getting uh, dragged along it will be very little. Yeah, it's just like uh, maybe that in the room, there's something very, very interesting, very, very attractive. But before I enter the room, you already think, okay, I'm going to go in just for a few seconds and I'm going to come out. But if you don't have, then it's, it's possible, it's easier. But if you don't have this idea in the first place, you go inside, oh, this is very interesting. Then half an hour later, you're still there. <laughs> yeah. Get it? Okay. Right. Another, another question. I can't Another question uh, is later. <laughs> okay. 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 Go ahead. Hi, Saido. Morning, Saido. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, uh, if I heard you correctly, uh, uh, about Samatha, you mentioned to, to us that is settling. Uh, yeah. am, am I right? Right. Uh, I also come across the definition of stealing, stealing the mind. You know? So what different do you see? What, do you, what different do you see these two definitions? Settling and stealing the mind. Settling to me is more like mm, Chinese say Chen Tian. Yeah, it's settling. It's like a lot of dust yeah, and okay, okay. settles. Okay. Stealing is more like this, don't move. Okay. But of course, when it's settled, it is still. In any case, you do not do that directly. In any case, yeah. Stealing, I... Uh, not so suitable for Samatha. In, in my research or uh, my looking into this, what it, how it's used in the text, uh, settling is still the best. Mm. At all. And does it mean that uh, the definition of stealing, people also equate it to so called you sit still? That's what you mean. Right? <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be. No, it, 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 that's the thing with language. It's important to use the best possible words. Yeah. That's why, why I, I, I'm, I'm done writing my book. On uh, the title is "What You Might Not Know About Jhana and Samadhi," and there's a lot of the, the biggest part of the book is dealing with translations. How words like Samadhi, Samatha, Jhana, Ekagata, Ekutipawa, um, all, all these words, what, what, what are the best words to translate them? I find that if you do not make, a, you do not translate them in the best possible way, then, um, then there's a greater chance for people to misunderstand and that leads to wrong practice. Yeah, no. no matter what, we have to depend on words. We have to depend on words. When we, we think to ourselves, we also use words. Yeah, when we teach, we need to use words. So um, if the words are not suitable, it can create a lot of problems. Yeah. And it's important to understand how people understand the words that you use. If they don't mm -hmm. understand correctly, then you, you can't convey the right message. So, so this book is already done. I'm having it printed. I already gotten somebody to uh, make an ebook out of it. Uh, should come up. Should come soon. Uh, it took me a long, long time to write. I started in year two thousand nine. Yeah, it's a. Uh, <laughs> it's been a long, long time. Mm. That's so, based on the early text. Right? That's what you meant. It's based on the early text. And, and it's based on the early text and it's also based on uh, uh, trying to connect that with uh, the teachings of contemporary teachers. Oh, okay, that's good. 
So yeah, so I try to connect them and see you and, and to help people to understand why there are seem to be why, why there seem to be conflict or disagreements in the in this. And once you understand that people are using words in different ways and this disagreement goes away. And that, that will help the misunderstanding of the words, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely uh, make it known through my mailing list and also to all the channels that I have. If you're, are you on our mailing list or something like that? Yes, I do. I thought okay. you you a click for for re-editing, especially to re-edit. Okay. Editing, is it? Yeah. It's already done, edit, yeah. edited. Yeah. It's edited. Right. So, okay. So. Next person, uh, Albert. You say you note in that noting, there is a desire to stop the thinking, then that is what I mean by the desire to stop thinking. We can know thinking without trying to stop it. It depends on the strength uh, or the, the attitude of that knowing. All right, let's try this, yeah? Can you say something in your head? Can like, you repeat your, your name in your head, your own name. Can you hear that? Yes. Yeah, so you know that, but it happens, right? Yes. So it is possible to know while thinking is happening. But if okay. your knowing is very hard, this is a hard knowing that is, <clears throat> and, and therefore you stop it. You, you may have even developed a habit of doing this. Yeah. But you, the soft, we want to be soft in our approach not be gentle, not go like this. So when the mind is thinking, it's saying something, yeah, 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 I need to go to the toilet now. And you can hear the mind say, I need to go to the toilet now. It's, it's good. Only when we can see thinking happening that we can understand what is thinking. We can understand that thinking, you can see that thinking is not who we are. You can know the truth. But if you can't see it happening, then how can you understand it? Yeah. So, but if when you know that there is thinking and it stops, it's okay too. But it's, the important thing is don't try to stop it. So I mean, people have a lot of thoughts and then they go, oh, this is very noisy. Stop, stop, stop. Now that'll be wrong attitude. It's okay if it happens. It's just noise. Just recognize this noise. You hear the noise. You're not too interested in the, um, the content of the noise. You just know that noise is happening. That there is activity. It's like if you do your hand, if you do this, there's activity. And mentally, there's activity. That's it. So if we want to be, we want to learn how to watch mental activity as well. So we can't possibly do that if you are always trying to stop it. And also if you're trying to stop the thinking, we create stress. It is not necessary uh, for that. The only time that it's important, is we want to deliberately uh, I was to say deliberately calm down the thinking is when it's too much, it's way too much. So when that happens, then just do anapana. You still, that is still not trying to stop the thinking directly. It's still creating the right conditions for the thinking to lessen. On another one uh, that is maybe necessary for some people is when they have lots and lots of negative thoughts, a lot of, not just negative evil thoughts you know so they may need uh, certain ways of stopping it like say uh, but still it's not directing like uh, think asking yourself is it good to think of that is it uh, useful is it does it bring me peace or stress uh, you're still using wisdom all people might direct their attention to something else if that doesn't work go to breathing like i said anapana yeah, but not to directly stop it. Overwhelming is the when you don't know what to do already, you cannot 
reminding yourself right view doesn't work. Uh, and actually, you I think you forgot about right attitude. Yeah. You're pushing, you're trying to get rid of the thoughts. There was a lot of uh, eagerness to end this thing, which is normal. And even for people who try to remember right attitude, they may not be able to do it anyway. So eventually in these situations, it's overwhelming with overwhelming emotions. The best thing is you to go back to something neutral, such as breathing. Yeah, so then it's very simple. It is not complicated. You don't try to investigate. You don't try to have right view or try to have right attitude because you just can't, you don't have the capacity to do it. So you go to something very, very simple. And so that worked for you. But after that, Eh, mana pergi itu, those things to not cannot watch them anymore. So uh, never mind, let it be. It's okay, let it be. You have your chance again. Don't worry. And you tell yourself, you program your mind that next time when I when I meet with such situation, when I notice fear, I want to know it. Tell yourself, give yourself this this idea because. Generally, people, when they meet with these uh, difficult emotions, they want to run away already. Yeah. So a little bit happens. Mm, I don't want to observe this. Like some feeling of, say, you feel a bit ashamed of something, the mind goes, mm, it will go off very, very fast. Within split second, it goes off. So that's why people tend to accumulate negative emotions because they tend to shove it under the carpet, you know, just swim under the carpet every time. So the so you want to condition yourself to be interested in the defilements. Then you can really grow. Then you can really uh, grow in wisdom. To People who don't want to observe defilements don't grow. People just want to make day, I just want calmness and all that. I don't want to watch greed, anger, delusion. They, they won't grow. You need, we need to be interested to observe defilements. Then we can understand if whether it's just somebody, somebody mentioned about the ego or fear or uh, jealousy or shame or any of those things. Uh, it's very, very important to be willing to stay with them and see, so what, what is this? Why is it here? ask questions from various angles. Uh, what do I want? Why does this arise? In the beginning, maybe you don't know how to ask the right question. You just simply throw questions into it, but it's okay. We have to start somewhere. Yeah, this doesn't work. Try another one. So the, when, it is, when it is weak, to, to ask questions when it is weak works. But when it's strong, you can't do it. So therefore, you have to be willing to meet them uh, and, and observe them when they are still early, when they are, when they are still small. Yeah. So don't think, oh, this is just a small thing. No need to watch. I'm busy. Then you don't get to learn. So when it's small, you cannot, you don't want to observe it. When it's big, you cannot observe it. Then when are you going to observe it? Right. So we need to be willing to uh, be interested. Um, and in the beginning, actually, to be honest with everybody, in the beginning, it's very uncomfortable because we are not used to it. And the discomfort actually comes mostly from our resistance of it. That is the attitude. So when you meet it, immediately remind yourself two things, right view, right attitude first. When you have these two in place, then observe it. Don't go and observe it when you have not equipped yourself properly. If you're not equipped yourself properly, you don't have all your weapons, you go in, you get beat up. So you need to be equipped first. Okay, uh, SK. Yes, one day. Uh, regarding oh, thoughts person. arising, mm. okay, a thought arising. So sometimes when thought arise, uh, I, I know that is some uh, unfinished task or an intended task. 
So what I do, you see, I quickly jot it down on the paper or on my notebook, and I, I find it helps. Is that the proper way to manage it? Yeah, about during meditation, right? Yeah, suddenly it, it, it occurs, or oh, I have an, an unfinished task, or oh, I have an intended task that I want to do. Yeah, so, it is, yeah, it's important enough, then you can just put it down. It's actually because you're afraid you'll forget. Uh, <laughs> yes, so, so, so I just, just throw it down and, uh, um, and it disappears. I mean, so because once you write it down, you're not afraid that you'll forget, so you're okay already. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. okay, I'll jot it down already. Uh, this might be very, very important. Could be life and death. <laughs> but I've, jot, <laughs> I've already jotted down, so I'm safe already. <laughs> so you, you can uh, feel more at ease after that. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I do that. It helps. It helps I, I do that myself. La. I do that myself. Uh -huh. so eventually, whether or not this is something really important, I don't really know even, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I may, may not know, but well, one thing is uh, remain aware. Yeah. Yeah, remain aware and don't uh, give up your awareness. Stay aware as you, okay, you try to get some, yeah, your notebook or your pen. Just know the whole process. Watch, your meditation didn't stop there. Yeah. Meditation hasn't stopped. You're still uh, observing. You know, you're moving your hand, you move your writing. In fact, it's, it's possible to to be aware of the writing itself. You know that this writing is happening. It's very interesting I, when I first experienced this, to see writing happening. It's fascinating. You can see that the, you can choose to observe this, the movement, the movement and the seeing, or you can also move to the mind, how the mind is making the hand move uh, it's very interesting. Maybe then you would think that whatever you want to write down is not so important anymore. <laughs> it's <was> very interesting. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, I would like to get clarity of the differentiation between wisdom and insight. It, uh, excite, uh, <laughs> uh, insight really comes from Outside, that is to say, what we hear and learn uh, is also important. Um, like learning how to practice. And they are actually foundations for insight to happen. Yeah. So we do not uh, think that that is any lesser. They're just different. And in fact, it's at a different level of wisdom. Uh, in the... In the... Um, like for example, the three questions on vipassana, yeah, how are fabrications to be viewed? Um, this 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 is something that we learn. So I've been telling you to see things as they are. Yeah, this is a view, and view is something that we learn. Then, with that, we want to go further. We want to see whether or not this view is actually true. We try to apply it and see whether it actually helps us. It, does it bring about betterment? Mm -hmm. right. So this is something that we can we try to apply and we need to think about it. We think about how to apply this and then see if it works. So this is a kind of wisdom as well. But then the eventually there's also the wisdom of... Uh, our own experience. Getting it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so, when it comes to um, our experience, it is not a matter of a view. Now, if you do something and you experience it in a particular way, it's not a view. And if you experience it over and over, then you eventually the mind becomes uh, more convinced of something. Like for example, say, um, okay, we, we learned that, okay, craving causes suffering. That's a view. 
we don't really know that. But as we take this view and then we, hmm, we try to check and see if it's true or not, then so next time we suffer and say, okay, is that craving? Okay, yeah, actually, because I want this, I want that and all that. Then as you watch that craving, the craving goes away, then you don't suffer. Then, oh, okay, it seems it's true. When you crave, you suffer. When you don't crave, you don't suffer. And as you observe this many, many times, this understanding deepens. Yeah. In the beginning, yeah, you get an understanding, but it's not very deep. So you still want to crave a lot. But as you observe, observe more and more of this, you understand deeper and deeper that craving actually does cause suffering. Then naturally the mind doesn't want to crave so much because why does it want to suffer? It doesn't want to suffer. So this is wisdom. This is also wisdom. Yeah. Now, when it comes to insight, it is more... It is it's, it's very sudden. Yeah, in it is shocking, in fact. Uh, it can be, it can be shocking. Uh, certain insights are um, shocking and certain insights are not so shocking, but they uh, they are very they, there's a kind of prof- profound profundity to it. Um, if you are shocking uh, one, shocking one, like for example, say the insight of another to sitting as not who you are. Like say, uh, so my, my, in my experience, let me see, should I talk about that one? Okay, this one. So I was in my meditation uh, teacher's uh, uh, meditation center. I was sitting down, um, was going to eat. But the mind was very peaceful, very calm, not too e- not eager about eating, just sitting there. And I was just moving my hand. I suddenly saw that this is not mine. It comes suddenly. Uh, suddenly. Very, very suddenly. And it, it comes as a shock because I've never seen it that way before. I mean, I've seen this thing many, many times. It's nothing new, but I've never seen it that way. And it was so fascinating that I was, ooh, yeah. was like, was looking at this thing like, wow, I can't even say whether it's like having a new toy. It's more, more, much far more than that. It's, it's an old toy, <laughs> this thing. Uh, but it was so fascinating that I was just, continually doing this, it completely blew my mind. Yeah. It's, it's, this hasn't changed. It's not because it's changed, but the way the minds saw it changed. Uh, and then after a while, it became mine again. <laughs> At that point, it wasn't my hand. And then after it became my hand again, the, the idea of I mm. came back. Yeah, but at the moment it wasn't there, and it it really really shocked me. So this is an example. You, then there are other examples that has to has to do with thinking, that has to do with talking, that has to do with other things. So it, it this idea of anatta grows with every insight. It is very very clear that it, it cannot be created. It cannot be thought out. You cannot think it out. It's just impossible. Yeah. So this is a different level of wisdom. So it, it builds up as well. This one, as you accumulate more and more of this, then it leads to other wisdom too. Yeah. So, so there are many levels of it. Uh, investigation is this, um, like when you talk about how our fabrications to be probed, it is something that is already happening. And you want to understand that thing. Like for example, so feeling, feeling is happening. Okay. And I ask, why is this feeling happening? That is a kind of investigation. Mm. Yeah. Not trying to think about should I do this? Should I do that? That that is not meditation kind of investigation. That's not dharma investigation. Yeah, you can of course investigate all sorts of things. 
Now, who did that? You go and investigate. But that's not that my investigation. Okay. All right. That's thinking. <laughs> Other times when when you're in the toilet or your dining room, eating and all that. Remember, your practice is still on. Okay. All right. Try to practice continuously. See you later.